Experts say the economy is recovering, but people in Burlington are feeling the effects. We have more in tonight's Economy Watch. Students at one local school might have to transfer because the school is struggling to find funding. Brandon Marshall joins us live in the studio with more. Brandon. More than $7 million have gone into the funding the Elon School since its opening in 2007. But now that the funds are starting to decrease, the administration has just announced that the school is for sale. The Elon School is expected to close unless a buyer is found. With the stock market plummeted the exact first year we opened our school. So when you look at the, the, the operation of this school, the entire time it's been here has been in this recession. Fred Gross, president of the Elon Homes and Schools for Children organization, is confident that the school will remain open next year. The school itself is functioning extraordinarily well. But the lack of funding means students both past and present potentially won't walk through these halls again. It's sad. Holly Smith graduated from the Elon School last year and now attends Elon University. She's disappointed that the other students may not have similar experiences. I had the opportunity to like take college classes here um, and they were funded by the Elon School, so just different things like that. An Elon School teacher said she can't go back to teaching at public schools because she's too spoiled here with her students. Very good school, very qu good quality um, education for the kids. They are really hardworking kids and like since it's so small, it's just like a big family. It's a very good environment. We're really happy here. We don't want it to close. And if the school closes, about 75% of the student body would have to find other schools to attend. The Elon School is the only independent college prep high school in Alamance County. Our goal ultimately is, is that this school continue and if, if people need to use this campus for a couple years, that's good. Gross is now looking for either another school, investors, or a group of parents to take over the institution. And he's confident he'll find another buyer before next fall. Since my initial statement with Dr. Gross, he commented saying, we are seeking to secure another school or nonprofit board to assume ownership and management. We think that this is a reasonable expectation at this point and do not think that the underclassmen will have to seek alternative schools. Live in studio, I'm Brandon Marshall. If you thought a calculator is only useful during class, think again. A new federal law kicked in last week, last week requiring all college websites to have a net price calculator. The tool can be used by prospective students and families to punch in their financial information as if they are filling out FAFSA or a CSS profile. It then adds in other college costs to see what the net price of attending the desired institution is for the specific family. Director of Financial Planning Patrick Murphy says the calculator helps clear the mystery behind tuition fees. Presidential elections are a year away, but last, week Elon poll, last week's Elon poll discovered that most North Carolinians support Obama's plans to increase taxes on Americans making over $1 million a year. But the poll also found that 47% of North Carolina residents disapprove of the way Obama is handling his job, while 43% are in favor. The poll surveyed more than 500 North Carolina residents, and the margin of error is 4.26%. Obama's job bill also particularly caught North Carolinians' attention. 48% of residents indicated they have been following the, regard, following the news regarding the bill somewhat closely, and 26% have been following it very closely. Each year, Americans spend approximately $800 million on peanut butter, but now they may be cutting back. Peanut butter suppliers across the country have increased their prices as high as 40% because of the increased temperatures this year. Peanuts are typically harvested in the fall, and this year is one of the worst seasons for harvesting. Gas prices have been holding steady recently. We'll tell you where to find the cheapest gas coming up. Today's weather was beautiful, but you might need your raincoat later this week. We'll tell you when after the break. A group of people are taking their ministry outside the church walls. Brian Mazursky went to see where they've gone to pray. It may be just a tent, but there's a lot underneath. Cars passing by the Trinity Worship Center on South Church Street will see the signs telling them to stop and asking if they need prayer. But the place to go for prayer is not in the church building itself. So we wanted to set up a, a prayer station ministry for people with needs that would come in prayer. It's one of the greatest privileges we have. Volunteer Carolyn Kingman at first had personal motives when praying, 
but now she says her focus is somewhere else. For about three months, it was all about me. And then I realized one day that I was praying for other circumstances and other people in my life, and I hadn't prayed for myself in a couple of weeks. And so from that point, I thought, now it's time to pray for others and help others pray. Jack Hensley and his wife first put up the tent 40 years ago, and they are still involved today. It's very simple. You just um, see the need, uh, put the station out, put a sign up, and pray. And the praying doesn't have to stop there. Hopefully it, it gives them the inspiration that they too can pray for others. And they don't even need a sign or a tent or a chair. They can just do it. Brian Mazursky, Phoenix 14 News. You can look for the prayer station's red banner on South Church Street every Thursday from 4 p.m. to dusk and every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Today was a beautiful day at 68 and sunny, but will that continue throughout this week? Here's your Phoenix 5-day forecast. Tuesday and Wednesday are both going to be sunny with highs close to 70 degrees. Have your umbrella with you Thursday, though. There's a chance for showers and a high of 61. The rain is going to bring cooler weather with it, and Friday's high is going to be 53 degrees. Saturday is going to be sunny with a high of 63. We'll tell you where you can fill up for less in this week's Pump Patrol. The Sitco and Shell on South Church Street are tied for the cheapest gas. You can fill up at either at either one for $3.31 a gallon. You can find regular for $3.35 a gallon at the Marathon on University. The Kangaroo and Haggard has regular for $3.37 a gallon. Those prices are about 60 cents higher than last year, but are about 10 cents cheaper than the national average, which is $3.43. Fall sports are wrapping up and the winter ones are getting started. I'll have your full coverage after the break. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. Welcome to my block party. Glad you can make it. The only triple doubles you get come with fries. Last time you blocked someone, you were online. I can do this all day. Your moves are just gay. Using gay to mean dumb or stupid, not cool. Not cool. Not in my house, not anywhere. It's not creative, it's offensive to gay people. And you're better than that. wasted electricity. You're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. After getting swept three sets to none by SOCOM Powerhouse Sanford, the volleyball team desperately needed to break out of their four-match losing streak. And Saturday night, the Phoenix did just that. Rather than getting swept by their opponents, Elon reversed the roles and took down YouTube Chattanooga in exciting fashion, sweeping the Lady Mox three sets to none. In the first two sets, Elon just snuck by with the wins, beating Chattanooga 25 to 23. But in the third set, the Phoenix had control, defeating Chattanooga 25 to 13. Which is two matches left in the regular season, Elon Volleyball's record is 17 and 13, with a 5 and 9 record in the Southern Conference. I talked with junior Allie Deach after Saturday's win, and she has high hopes for the rest of the season. Oh, we're definitely pumped. I think everyone's turned on this new fire and fight and determination because we know that, you know, we're still battling for a spot in the tournament. If you want to support your Phoenix as they close out the regular season, the women will play rival UNCG on Friday night at 7. And Senior Day will be Sunday afternoon at 2 when the Phoenix take on the Citadel. Both matches will be home in Alumni Gym. 
The fall seasons are wrapping up and basketball is just getting started. Elon took the court Thursday for an early season exhibition game against the Washington and Lee Generals. Elon dominated the Generals from the get-go as Lucas Troutman throws it down from the out-of-bounds alley-oop. Elon kicks the ball around the arc and it ends up with senior Drew Spratling who hits a three-pointer from the corner. Look out for Jack Eisenbarger this season as he chalks up another three for the Phoenix. Eisenbarger, a sophomore, makes another three from the outside. Number 20 ended up with a game high of 20 points. Troutman comes up big with another big dunk as Elon cruises past the Generals 96 to 48. The first regular season game is Friday as they travel north to take on the University of Massachusetts. Baseball season is rapidly approaching and while Elon's baseball schedule hasn't officially been released, Phoenix 14 News has learned of some of the Phoenix's games. On March 7th, the UNC Tar Heels will come to Latham Park to play an afternoon game. The North Carolina State Wolfpack will come to Elon to play an evening game on March 13th. And finally, on March 22nd, the Phoenix will head down to Clemson to take on the Tigers in a two-game series. So I got for sports. Back to you guys. Barnes & Noble reached out to the community Saturday and hosted a book reading for local children. The Thanksgiving-themed event was geared towards drawing more members of the community to the new store. Some of the readers at the event were Elon's own education majors. Look out Glee, this past, this past weekend Sweet Signatures hosted Acapalooza 2011. The event held Saturday night in Whitley Auditorium, Auditorium hosted eight groups from across the East Coast. Each group showcased their talents by performing hits from artists like Rihanna, Taylor Swift, and Justin Timberlake. The nice, uh, night also included a performance by the professional vocal band Transit. If you missed Acapalooza, Elon's acapella groups will be hosting their fall concerts in the coming month. Alohomora, that's the spell you'll have to use to unlock the Harry Potter vault. This series will be in the stores for the Christmas season, but not for long after that. Warner Brother Films has announced that on December 29th, they will stop shipping all eight of the movies to stores. The films will not be sold in stores until an undisclosed date in the future. Sales are expected to skyrocket this holiday season. So far, video sales have earned $5.1 billion. And I bet those... Uh DVDs will just be flying off the shelves this Christmas, you know, perfect stocking stuffer. I know. I really want to get the entire series just Me so too. I can have it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's Phoenix 14 News. Keep checking with us throughout the week on our website, phoenix14news.wordpress.com, or on our Facebook or Twitter page. I'm Nicole Chadwick. And I'm Addie Haney. Have a great week, Elon. <laughs>